Welcome this evening. We gather tonight and acknowledge that in our grief that we can still celebrate our Savior, and that's a beautiful thing. So in our grief, we acknowledge that we can find joy. We have a, a response here, if you would um, join me in this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God, nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world.
God, you have never forsaken us and you have never left us alone.
as we look for comfort from you and we find peace in you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Please join me in this reading. Come, Holy Spirit, comfort us and all who mourn this time. Give us strength to grieve as we must. Help us receive your healing in the midst of our pain. And find new order after the chaos of loss. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Light the Advent candle. Candles. We light this first candle to remember those who we have loved and lost. We pause to remember clearly their faces, their voices, their bodies. We embrace and give thanks for the memories that bind them to us in this season of expectation when all creation waits for the light. Remember them with love. May God's eternal love surround them. Come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom the captive of Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. We light this second candle to remember the pain of loss. Loss of relationships, loss of trust, loss of jobs, loss of health, loss of faith, a loss of joy. We acknowledge and embrace the pain of the past, O oh God, and we offer it to you, asking that into our wounded hearts and open hands, you will place the gift of peace, shalom. We remember, remember that through you all things are possible. Refresh, restore, renew us, O oh God, and lead us into your future. Come thou wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily to us, that from on high will show, and teach us in your ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us, years that have been heavy with our burdens. We accept and lay before you, God, the sharpness of memory, the sadness and grief, the hurt and fear, the anger and pain. We accept and lay before you the ways we feel we have fallen short, and the times we have spent blaming ourselves and you for all that we have suffered. We accept and lay before you times we have walked alone in darkness and in knowledge of our own mortality. We remember, though we have journeyed far, and that while lost, we may have turned away from the light. The light itself has not failed. We remember that to be upon us, and though the night be dark, with the turning of the wheel, the dawn will come. God defeats the darkness. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by our advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows come to light. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. We light this fourth candle to remember faith, the gift of light and hope that God offers to us in the stories of Christmas, which both also began in abandonment, insecurity and humbleness in a poor state. 
We remember that the loving God who kept the light shining in the temple and who came to share this light with us promises us comfort and peace. We remember the one who shares our burdens, who shows us the way to the light, and who journeys with us into all our tomorrows. O come, desire of nations, bind in one our hearts of all mankind. Let us pray. God of wisdom, we come to you this Christmas season, tired, in turmoil, and in pain. As the nights have grown longer, so has the darkness grown and wrapped itself around our hearts. In this season of the longest night, we ask your healing blessings upon all we carry in our hearts. Sorrow we fear may never end, wounds we cannot even put into words. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, there are those among us who are grieving over what might have been, death or loss, or terrible hurt that has changed our experience of Christmas. We remember that once it was a spiritual day, a special day for us, but someone or something precious has gone away from us in this life. We have lost a beloved, a job, a goal, a cause, a dream. We find ourselves adrift and alone. We are weary from the journey and we have found no room at the end. We come to you seeking rest and peace and shelter from the storm. Lord, hear our prayer. God of grace, in the spirit of the season, grant us all that we need to comfort us as we journey through this Christmas season. We ask that you shelter and sustain all of us, both here and throughout the world, who wander or want to weep or are heavy laden, that we may be lifted up in courage and journey on in thy peace. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, in this Christmas season, we embrace and offer up to you all that used to be, which is now lost to us and cannot be again. With celebration all around us, memories of what was and fears of what may be weigh heavy on our hearts. Please hold us close in your embrace. Be near to us this night until the light returns and morning comes. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's hear these words from David in Psalms. <coughs> I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no thing good. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and save those who, cr who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, though the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. There's something really beautiful about getting into Psalms because we can be truly reminded that grief is a real thing. That grief isn't a new thing. That grief is something that many of us and all of us have experienced. We are allowed to feel it. We are allowed to experience it. We are allowed to cry out. We are allowed to process it. We are allowed to ask why and how and, and when and where, all of those questions that we want to ask. Because God wants us to come to him in our grief. God wants us to share our hearts with him, and he wants us to walk with him in it. Verse 18 in that passage said, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God shares the pain of every single person, of all of us and everyone in this room. He sees pain, and he feels pain, and he knows pain. And when you're hurting, he isn't distant. He is aware of your pain, and he cares for your pain, and he shares that pain with you. God is never shocked by our emotions, or, or by our thoughts, or by our feelings. God is never shocked by anything that we share with him. Scripture tells us these things over and over again. He is close to the broken heart. Hebrews 4.15 says, Jesus understands every weakness of ours, because he was tempted in every way that we are. We see in scripture that Jesus' friend Lazarus passed away, and when Jesus got there and, and was surrounded by his friends, that he wept. He cried out in emotion to his father. Jesus felt and experienced a new grief, and he wants to walk with us in those situations. He understands emotional pain from his walk, like the abandonment that he experienced when people left him alone. The loneliness he felt when he was taking everything on his shoulders. The criticism he, he took on when, when everyone was coming at him. The rejection that people had given him because they didn't believe. And the betrayal of his closest friends when they turned him over. He understands and experienced loss. And Jesus also understands physical pain. Jesus went to the cross. He knows what it's like to feel pain. When we experience grief, when we feel grief, he is with us. God has come among us so that he could share in our troubles with us. So we can bring our pain to God in the confidence of knowing that he understands it. And he understands it from personal experience. God cares about our pain and our sorrow and he provides help to deal with these things. We come today on this longest night of the year where darkness comes and it stays longer. And we acknowledge, while we say a Merry Christmas to others, we might not feel very merry. But we look at the hope of Christmas, knowing that light does come. And that even in our personal darkness, we have the hope and knowledge of light that will come after darkness. Jesus came as the light of the world into a world that was feeling the weight of the darkness while waiting for a promised Savior. And we can know today that grief does not last forever. As we walk through this season of Christmas, it often revolves around memories or stories. Stories in the movies or in musicals or in scripture or familiar stories or stories of past Christmas or stories of family members. Memories of what no longer is or memories that we long to have again. Some people who are able to control their feelings year-round at this time find it really hard to contain those emotions while everything is going on around them with the holidays. It's hard to be able to enjoy the Christmas spirit when we're experiencing those moments. Those memories can bring back this emotions and grief, and sometimes we feel this mix of sadness and joy. The memories of the people who no longer sit at our table. The memories or experiences of painful memories, those difficult times. We walk through the loss of those that are so very important to us, and we cannot process how we celebrate this season without them. We wish the person that has walked away from us would return. We struggle to comprehend a life-altering diagnosis or of yourself or someone else. We don't know how to process the loss of a job that was important to us for so many reasons. The divorce that was not part of our plans, the, the anxiety or depression or overthinking minds that simply 
come more, uh, more on us because it's a holiday. We don't know how we will make ends meet today, let alone in this time. We don't look forward to the hard encounters with people that we may have to see during the holidays. And we acknowledge tonight that sometimes it's okay if the most wonderful time of the year is not the most wonderful time. Sometimes it's necessary to acknowledge our hurt and our pain and our void. And as we acknowledge and recognize, we have to choose to fill our voids with our Savior. Only he can come into our empty spaces and make those spaces whole again. We have to choose to seek him and not just sit in our grief and stay there, but turn to him because he's experienced it and he's felt it and he knows it and he wants to walk with us in it. I saw an ad today for Five Below. It said, stuff up on joy at Five Below. And part of me giggled at that and I thought, oh, are they offering Jesus at Five Below? But it was for stocking stuffers and, and craft kits and gifts. But if we're honest, the world is offering us all of these things that won't bring us true and complete joy. It's a fleeting joy, not a constant joy. It isn't surprising that Christmas is one of the busier days at the local bar, a day where many relapses happen, where increased rates of depression during the holidays have been documented by doctors and mental health workers. There's an increase in holiday debts each year. Suicide rates increase during this time. Loneliness and the fear of missing out increase. There's more stress and bad situations are reinforced. Overeating is up and ER visits increase, not to mention all the unrealistic expectations we put. But if we go to Five Below or anywhere else the world tells us to, we will find joy. Sometimes I want that wrong buzzer, right? You just say, eh, not really. Jesus provides us with constant love. God's love that never leaves us and will always be the same in our life. Jesus comforts us and gives us peace. People who are grieving often say that it's like a heaviness that comes over us or a stone that weighs on our hearts. It feels like someone is pressing down on you and it actually hurts physically. Matthew 5, 4 says, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He provides his uninterrupted love if we are willing to see it. In his direct comfort, if we are willing to accept it. Jesus offers us hope. God ministers to us by providing hope for the future, despite what we're feeling in the moment. He does this by giving us a vision for the future. He replaces what we have lost with something far better, far greater than anything we can experience on this earth. When we recognize that the story isn't over and our future is with him, we can experience hope. In the midst of this season and the grief that we are feeling, we need to remember that Jesus brings us joy. We talked in staff today about this reminder of, of joy. And Tom shared with us that it's like a, a hum that just keeps going. Because Jesus is constant in our life. And if Jesus is constant, he is joy, then that means joy is constant. It never leaves us, but we have to choose it. He is the only place where we're going to find joy in our grief, where we're going to be able to celebrate our Savior in our grief because of Him. Because grief isn't new. Loss isn't a new thing. It doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt and it's not hard, especially in this season. It means that with God, we aren't alone. That with God, that He will get us through it. Jesus tells us to come to Him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's choose to seek and pursue Jesus and find hope and find peace and find love and even find joy in the midst of our pain. Jesus brings us joy. In our hurt, in our loss, in our circumstances, we can experience joy because he is joy. So let's choose to remember joy, to stock up on that joy, and remember that joy is Jesus, and Jesus is the same all the time. He is where the joy is, and only He can fill the broken places in our life with joy. And when we are in a season of overwhelming joy, let's share it with those that aren't quite feeling it as much. Because we have so many opportunities to walk along others in their grief as well. Because maybe in this season we are experiencing our, our grief. But maybe next season we'll be able to walk with someone that's walking through a season of grief as well. Let's pray. God, this morning, this evening, we come to you and we're grateful. We come to you all the time. We're grateful for who you are. We're grateful that you never leave us. We're grateful that you always walk beside us. God, tonight, please comfort us. Bring us peace in our pain. 
Bring us hope in knowing that this pain doesn't last forever. Bring us love, reminding us of how loved we are by you. And bring us joy, unending joy in the midst of our pain, because we know that you are where the joy is. God, we thank you that we get to draw near to you. We thank you that you've experienced pain and you want to walk with us in it. Continue to remind us of, our pres of your presence. Continue to, to remind us that you are there when we aren't seeking. God, we pray these things in your name. Amen. We're going to continue our time of reflection together. We're going to enter a time of communion and a time where we can light candles for those things that we're missing today or the things that we're grieving today. Let's be reminded that life is full of challenges, full of sorrow, full of simply hard things. But there is a God that wants to hold our hands through it, wants to guide us to the next part of our journey, wants to listen to us, and wants to comfort us. A God that wants us to feel peace, to know that there is hope, and wants us to experience joy in all of our days. A God that loves us more than we can imagine. Coming here, we want to remember those that are not with us, and acknowledge the pain that we may be feeling. And we want to leave here knowing that God is with us, that we are never alone, that it's okay to cry, it's okay to be sad, but we can make a commitment to find joy in each day in the presence of God. After you serve communion, you are free to light one or more of the individual candles to represent those persons or situations that you are missing this Christmas season. As we are here today, we remember Jesus. We remember that he loves us. We remember that he is with us. We remember that his presence is here today on this day. As we are gathered together, we know that that is his promise, that he is here. The Holy Spirit is here. God Almighty is here. And Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is here today. So today we have the opportunity to celebrate communion. Today we have the opportunity to come here and remember me, say Jesus. As we are here, remember Jesus. Remember that he cried with you. Remember that he walks with you. Remember that he knows who you are and where you are right now. But in the midst of every situation, remember me, say Jesus. Today we remember that night that Jesus was with the disciples. He said, and he said, told these words. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, every time that you take this bread, remember me. Remember Jesus today. He also took the cup and he said, this this is my blood that is shed for you. And remember me. Again, remember me, say Jesus, today for us. I want to invite you to pray with me. God Almighty, Prince of Peace, our Counselor, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our friend, you are here in this place, and your Holy Spirit is moving on this place. We come to you, and we want to remember you today. As the memories come, as the feelings come, as our thoughts come, as our, we are crying and as we are grieving, we remember you on this time and on this moment. We remember that you died on the cross because you love us. We remember that you rose and you are in heaven and you are alive and we have salvation through you. And we remember that we can have that confidence and stand up knowing that we have the victory in you, Jesus. And today in your name, we stand up and we remember you, God. Holy Spirit, move and touch our hearts as we take this bread that represents your body 
And as we take this cup that represent your blood, I bless these elements that represent you. And as we take this holy moment, move God. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, God Almighty. Emmanuel, God with us. We need you today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much because today we have this opportunity to take this holy moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're able, please stand up and let's celebrate Jesus today.
God, this morning, this evening, all times, we thank you that we get to come to your presence, that we get to um, walk with you, and we thank you that you are here with us. God, thank you for allowing us this time where we can come and, and find comfort in you, and find joy in you, and hope in you. Thank you for sending your son for us, so that we could live in relationship with you, so that we would have this opportunity to draw near to you, so that we can know you more, so that we could cry out to you and share all of our life with you. God, help us this night to be comforted in your presence, reminding us that the story's not over, reminding us that you have more in store for us to come. God, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Tonight we light all of these candles to reflect on and remember in the midst of whatever we are feeling, amidst of the darkness, a light still shines. And that is the light of Christ, our Savior. We're going to sing one more song and we invite you to join us.
God, tonight we lift every person in this room and all that are joining with us online or those that couldn't join us tonight, we lift them to you. We lift our grief to you. We lift our sadness to you. We lift our losses to you. We lift our pain to you. We know that we find glory in you. We know that we find light and hope and joy in you. God, we lift every candle that was lit tonight to you. We lift the circumstances, the situations, the experiences, the losses. We lift them to you. God, comfort us in those experiences. Comfort us in those losses. Comfort us in those pains. And help us to find joy. Help us to find the constant joy that's always there that we would find it in this season and always. God, thank you that we can come to you in all of our situations. Thank you that we can come to you in all of our circumstances and that you want us to draw near to you. Thank you that we come, we can come and ask our whys and, and hows and, and our confusion and our sadness and our, our grief and our anger. Thank you that we can bring those to you. And thank you that you give us comfort. Thank you that you give us peace. That you are our Father, you are, are our Savior, and you have come. God, we pray these things in your name. Amen. As you leave this place tonight, we want you to re be reminded that there is joy. There is joy in our sadness, there is joy in our grief, there is joy in our losses. Because Jesus is with us, and he is our joy. If you would like prayer tonight, we have Stephen's ministers here in the front that would love to pray with you, that would love to walk through this season with you and just spend some time um, helping you to see that joy tonight. So um, you're welcome to join them. But we hope to see you on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day over these next days.